Whoa, what happened to GameStop stock, right? A stock that was trading as little as $3, $6 per share earlier this year and has rocketed to as much as $2,400% by the end of this month, January, at the time that I'm doing this video. What? And can you make some of this money too? That's the other question. Is it too late to get rich off Wall Street? Or, well, not probably not rich, but at least make some money? Well, that's what we're gonna talk about in this exciting episode today, okay? We're gonna talk about exactly what is short selling, what happened to GameStop stock that has it rocketing to 2,000 plus percent, and the big question you wanna know, right? Is it too late to get in on this action? Should you even get in? Is this even real? Is this even legal and I'll share with you the most exciting part about this entire thing that literally nobody's talking about the media is not talking about and before we get started I just want to share with you because the question will be like well why should we listen to you Chris well I'll tell you I've been investing prep for about seven years now okay ever since I found out that hey I need to pay off my student loans and get off this mortgage and have two kids I figured I need to learn investing so for seven years I've been doing stock investing dividend investing um day trading at, at one point that sucked okay and doing real estate investing precious metals investing crypto I mean I've done it all so in this episode I just want to share with you some things that are going to be helpful for you as a beginner probably trying to figure out what is happening here and what does this mean can I really make money I'm gonna break it down to you step by step so that you can take this information kick it around and make a decision that works for you okay without all the interference and all the hype 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 from the media all right let's get started I'm gonna share with you this in three different phases okay phase one is what exactly is short selling okay so let's start off with a nice little story okay cuz I love telling stories like I've been telling stories to my little boys once upon a time there was this stock called GameStop okay it goes by the ticker symbol GME now if you don't know GameStop it's a company that sells video games and they're like a brick-and-mortar store well essentially GameStop has been being destroyed for the past couple years because more people are like streaming their stuff and streaming services with PlayStation, Xbox. So people are not going here to GameStop to get games anymore. Plus, last time I went there, I tried to trade in my Super NES game. And they tried to give me pennies for my stuff. I was like, forget that. I'm just gonna keep it. Anyway, so we see that GameStop is revenues and their earnings and all of that has been falling, falling growth. Guess what? Hedge fund guy here and a lot of other hedge funds noticed this trend. And what do they do? They decide to short the stock, okay? Now, what does that mean? They short it. In other words, they bet that the stock price is going to go down, which is a reasonable bet given the fundamental story we just shared with GameStop. Now, what's interesting is that GameStop stock has been shorted so heavily that at one point, their stock was 130% of the float, which means the total amount of shares that are available from GameStop were being shorted. Now, your next question is to be like, Chris, how is it possible to short more than 100% of anything? I'll tell you how in a quick bit. Anyway, that, that leaves GameStop as one of the most shorted stocks in the market, period. Well, what's interesting is come along some guys in uh, some guys in a forum called Wall Street Bets. It's a Reddit forum, okay? These guys basically they they basically post a bunch of memes and talk a lot of crap about each other, right? It's probably not a super high high level of conversation and uh, conversation, great conversation happening there, but. But some of them notice something. They notice that, hey, there's a lot of shorting, a huge short position on GameStop right now. We think that we could probably put some, make some money off of them by going long. And now when long means buying the stock, okay? So before we continue with this in, in intricate plot and story, we gotta take a quick moment to talk about what is short selling. Okay, first, so first of all, it's very simple. In, in a general sense, right, if you wanted to buy a stock and make money, well, that would make you the buyer here, okay? So here's the buyer, and then there's a broker who helps facilitate the trading of stock. These little red thing, red triangles are shares of stock, okay? And then here's a seller. For there to be a market, there has to be a buyer and a seller. There always has to be, okay? The buyer is looking to buy at a certain price. The seller is looking to sell at a certain price. And that's how you get price discovery, and that's how the price changes. As more buyers are buying the stock, the price goes up. As more sellers are selling the stock, the price goes down, okay? And so that's the price action that normally happens. Now, 
in a short selling position situation you have the buyer here, they're buying stocks and moving it in and out of the, of, the, of the total float in the marketplace, and then you have the seller. Now, typically, the seller would be buying and selling, right, moving back and forth, but in this case, in the short sell position, they don't have any stock. They don't have any stock at all. What they're doing is they're going to the broker, and the broker is lending them shares of stock. They then take these lent shares at a certain price, and then automatically sell them into the marketplace. Now, by doing that, it actually causes pressure on the price. Because remember, when you sell a stock, that causes the price to go down. So when you're selling stock that you never bought in the first place, notice the arrow here is just one way. It's not back and forth like this one. That causes an unequal amount of pressure on the stock price to go down. So the idea for the short seller is that if he borrows stock at, let's say, $100 per share, immediately sells it, he's hoping that the price of the, sh of the, of the stock will go down, go down, go down, so that at some point he can then buy it back at a less price. If he buys it back at a decreased price, okay, now you can see it he can make a profit. So for example, he could probably then buy them back for $50 a share. When he buys them back and returns them back to the broker, he only has to pay for the shares that they're worth then, $50. And he keeps the difference of $50 per share. Does that make sense? So essentially what he's doing, he's trying to like, he's trying to keep the difference. It's like an arbitrage type opportunity. Take it, sell it at a certain price, high price, bet that it goes down, and then buy back the, the, the shares and then give them back to the broker at a less price, keep the profit. Now, that's in the perfect ideal situation for our short selling friend, okay? Now, let's talk about what happens when it doesn't go right. So here you have your broker being in the middle of everything right here with the entire market, okay? And these are all your shares in the market. You have your buyer, you have your seller here. Now the seller has done the same thing. He sold off shares, he's borrowed shares from the broker, sold them off immediately with the intent to hope to take a buy them back at a lower price. But what happens if there are more buyers in the situation? Remember, if there are more buyers buying up the stock, what does that do to the price? It causes it to go up, right? And so if there are more buyers, more people who are willing to buy these shares, that causes the price to go up. Now, if the price goes up, this puts the short seller p p person in a bad situation because at some point he may have to buy back those shares. And when he does, let's say for example, at $200 per share, he'd have to pay the broker back the value of those shares, which is $200 per share. So he's literally bought it for hundred, paying back 200. He's lost 100% of his money, right? 100%, but actually 200% because he lost the initial money that he put and the, but, and has to pay the additional $100 per share as well. But you, what's interesting is that not only does he then have to buy back those shares at a higher price and pay them back to the broker and lose money, but the very action of him buying back causes the price to go up even further. And you could have a situation where another guy who was shorting at a much heavier leverage position, all of a sudden has to cover his, his, his short. That's what it means to buy back the shares. And then he may have to buy back cover at $500. So this person has lost 600% of his money, right? Assuming he bought at $100. But guess what? When he buys back at $500 to pay back the broker, this also causes the price to rise even further and even further. As you can see, it can keep going, going higher and higher. And this, my friend, is what's called a short squeeze, where basically all the short sellers are being squeezed out of their, out of their positions. And as, and as each one gets squeezed out, it causes another person up the chain to get squeezed out as well and further on and it becomes this vir virtuous vicious cycle that can be deadly now the first question you may be asking and i kind of want to answer it is like okay should i consider short selling and i don't know what your risk tolerance is so this is a decision you have to make for yourself but here's some things to keep in mind that i keep in mind I personally, I'm not a fan of short selling. Generally, short selling is something that big institutions do because they have a lot of capital and leverage to do it. But one of the reasons I don't particularly like it is because the risk, if you haven't noticed, is infinite. 
This price can go to infinity. That's what this symbol is, by the way. When you buy a stock, at, let's say $100 per share, and it drops down to zero, well, your risk is you lose $100, that's it. But in this particular case, as a short seller, if the price were to go to 200, you lose $100 plus another $100. It goes to $500, you could lose $400, and you could essentially, theoretically, lose an infinite amount of money, hundreds, thousands, maybe even millions of dollars. Yikes, I don't like that risk profile. Another thing is that shorting the market right now, in my opinion, is also particularly dangerous given the fact that we know that the Federal Reserve likes their stock market nice and hip, nice and high, right? So if they see situations where the market is, uh, let's say, coming down, the, the Fed has no problem coming in with their huge, basically infinite pocketbook to boost up the stock market. That's why shorting right now just doesn't seem like a good idea because basically you would be going against the Fed right now, one-on-one. -on -one. Remember, the Fed has an unlimited pocketbook, okay? Unlimited. So going after the Fed is kind of like going after an unbeatable raid boss. I don't care what kind of gear you got. He's gonna, they're gonna one shot you each and every time, okay? <laughs> so that's how the short squeeze situation plays out. Okay, back to our story between hedge fund guy and Wall Street bets guy. All right, phase two. What happened to GameStop, GameStop stock, okay? Now that we know the short selling story and we have a better understanding of it, this will also let us know, is it too late to get rich off Wall Street and make some money off of this thing? Let's find out. Okay, so this is a nice little chart that, by the way, I got from an article off of CNBC. You gotta check it out, it's a really good article that kind of displays in a, in a nice little timeline what has happened and some key points to keep in mind that I think is good to like, it gives you a great analysis of what, what has happened with GameStop stock. Okay, so here's the chart, right? This chart starts off here on the left side going up from $100, 200, 300, 400, $5. This is the, this is the share price of GameStop and then this is the week of the 25th all the way up until the 29th okay so i don't know what's gonna happen this week after but based on what i share you share with you here it might help you get an idea and answer some of the questions if it's too late to get involved okay january 25th starts off with the wild ride in gamestop okay so keep in mind we were uh we're seeing gamestop crack $150 at this point right here. So at this point, many of the, uh, the gentlemen and the cats that are inside the Wall Street Bets Reddit group are gathering together. They're pool going after this stock. They're putting money in it because they're hoping that they can make a ton of money by causing a short squeeze amongst the huge short positions that the hedge funds have. So what happens is they're going into the 25th. There's a little bit of activity here, 26, not so much here, but you still start some seeing activity growing up to about $150. And then all of a sudden on the morning of the 27th, I remember seeing this too, Elon Musk tweets game stonk, okay? And that tweet causes the price to shoot up almost by 100% into the $300 range, okay? Almost 100% literally off just one tweet. At this point, this is where hedge fund, the hedge fund Melvin Capital says that they closed out their entire position in GameStop because they've taken in massive losses. Remember what we talked about, as the short, as the stock price goes up, you're, you're losing tons of money, tons and tons, and it's an infinite loss. The, stock high, the more you lose, the more you have to cover and buy back, the more the stock price keeps going up, and that's what happens even into the 27th. You see the price hitting close to 400, and then all of a sudden into the morning of the 28th, it just shoots up to $500, okay? So more people are being squeezed out of their position it's kind of working, okay? It's kind of working very, very well for our small retail investors in the Reddit group that are trying to make some money and take and get paid off of Wall Street's, some would say, very foolish and reckless use of funds in the market and investment. So anyway, what's interesting on the 28th, you see the brokers restrict trading, which was such a weak move, right? Allegedly, they said they had to do it because of some stipulations from the SEC. That restriction to trading caused the price to like 
like basically crashed all the way down to $100. It rebounds back up here to around the $300 mark and shakes and bakes a little bit onto the 29th into the Friday. Robinhood lifts their restrictions and all of a sudden the price recovers about over a little over 350 bucks and it's trading up and down a little bit into the weekend and there you have it leaving around $350, $380. So what do we know? We know that hedge funds disclosed that they had short positions in GameStop. We know that GameStop had 130% of its float was short. And remember we asked, how is it possible to have a 130%? I think it's because of what we described in phase one. The very fact that someone can borrow shares from the broker and then sell them without ever having to buy them, what, me, what stops you from borrowing the same shares that someone else has borrowed, right? That's extremely possible, which means that you can just have 130, 200, 500% short on a certain number of shares in a pool because the, each share is being shorted and sold more than once. As you can see, that type of leverage is what could definitely cause huge spikes in the, in, in the price when they're forced all of a sudden to have to cover all of those shorts that they sold. Remember, at some point, you gotta buy them back, okay? So we know, we then learned that Melvin Capital lost well over $3 billion. I just wanna make sure you see that. That's a B, okay? Billion dollars just from this move alone. Citron Research, another hedge fund that was claiming they were hugely short on GameStop, that says that they lost 100% of their position. Okay, so because I'm too lazy, I don't wanna redo the board, okay? We're just gonna go right straight into phase three. And phase three, based on everything we know, leads us to the frequently asked questions. And that first question is, the big question you wanna know, is there still more room to run? Is it too late to get paid off of Wall Street? Well, the answer is, it depends on you, okay? First of all, here's the way I, I see it. It's interesting because you've got Citron Research saying that they lost 100%, that they've lost 100%, and, they, and Melvin Capital saying that they closed out their positions. I don't know that that's true, right? I don't believe everything I hear in the media. Number one, why is that? Because based on some research from another article that, from, that was released from the New York Times, they, say, they showed that Despite the fact that we, there has been so much activity and so much increase in the, in the price and a lot of, uh, of uh, short sellers covering their positions, the short position for GameStop has fallen from 130% to 115%. That's right, my friends. There's still people shorting the stock even as all of this is happening. So. I don't know, it may suggest to me that it could be possible that there's still more room to grow, run for this thing, but of course, you'd be taking, that's a chance that you have to take. Which leads me into the second question, should you get in? Even if there is room, should you get into GameStop right now? And once again, that's a decision that's up to you, it's dependent on your risk tolerance. For me personally, I wouldn't. Why? Because I'm an investor, not a gambler. This to me is a gamble because as an investor, I like to look at the underlying fundamentals of each company that I'm investing in and GameStop just doesn't have it. They don't have it, okay? Even their, their boards and their, uh, their board that's in the company have seen all the price action and they're not even paying attention to it because they know that it's just kind of like this war that's going on between the retail bros and the Wall Street and the Wall Street hedge funds, which, hey, I love it. I'm Because we're gonna talk about that in a quick second. I love my retail bros sticking it to the Wall Street guys, love it. But personally, I wouldn't get involved because I'm an investor and I like to know where my where things are going before I invest in a company. And this is just basically gambling. Although, you know, depending on your risk tolerance, it could be a nice gamble. Third question is, that, is should you short stocks in general? And we kind of talked about that already. I personally, I'm not a fan of it for the reasons that we talked about. There's just way too much risk involved and with the risk being infinite, it's just not worth it in my opinion. Is all of the, and the next question is, is all this legit? Is this really happening? Is what we're seeing, is this actually retail investors or is there something else going on? I've heard some people claim that what we're seeing may not be actually all retail investors going after it. It could be the machines. So, so what people don't realize is that there's that most of the stock market is being those buyers and sellers you're seeing are not humans, right? They're basically machines, high put together 
algorithms that are detecting whether or not they should buy and sell and they're doing it on autopilot. Think of it like Facebook algorithm that figures out what it is that you like and puts the stuff in front of you that you like so that you continue clicking and coming to Facebook. It's the same thing for stocks. They seek out trends and when they see a trend, they jump on it and buy, 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 buy. When they see something that's going out of style, they sell, 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 sell. It's the reason why we had what we had in March of 2020 with a huge drop, nearly 30% drop and down. A lot of that was basically from machines, sell, 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 sell. There's a reason why the NASDAQ and the Dow had to like basically shut down the exchange multiple times to give traders a break. Well, that was to basically give the machines times to reset because they were just selling like crazy and while that may sound like a reasonable argument I don't know I have a hard time buying it all the way partly because for example when you see the part where Elon Musk tweets game stunk you see this huge spike in the price I don't know that algorithms are pe peeking out what ha what's happening on social media right they don't know who Elon Musk is they don't I am sure these algorithms are not responding to Elon Musk as a significant contributing factor to market equity pricing, right? I don't think so. I think that was because people have, Elon Musk influences people and therefore people, retail investors, made a move on it. So, and then when you see the price drop here, that was because brokers restricted trading. So guess what? Retail investors couldn't trade, couldn't buy anymore. You saw the price take a plummet. To my, in, in, for me, I think there's a lot more retail investor involvement here than we may think. Although I do agree there could be more, some algorithms and machine high frequency trading that's happening here. There's just no way to know to what percentage it is happening. Another great question is, should this all be legal? Should it be legal for Wall Street, for, for people like you and I to get together on a forum on social media and discuss a strategy where we all tag team as a group, as a concerted effort to go in on a stock or to plunge a stock? I don't know. I don't think, in my opinion, I don't see anything wrong with that. Because if you ask that question, then you also have to ask your question, is it wrong for Wall Street hedge funds to take leverage, 10x leverage on stocks and over and overly restrict and overly suppress a stock with their huge amount of capital that, by the way, they borrow from the Federal Reserve and then make these huge bets on and sometimes lose and then get bailed out? I don't know, right? So if they're gonna ask that question about retail investors, they gotta ask that question about the institutional investor as well. But as far as I'm concerned, hey, if you're not, if you're not insider trading and you're just trying to, you're just buying a stock because you believe it's gonna do it, do well in the and you have a group of people that think they can do the same, I theoretically, like one lawyer said in the New York Times article, there's nothing illegal about doing that. And then lastly, the question, the question, the thing that is most encouraging to me, the most exciting part about this entire thing that nobody is talking about is that this turns out to be the perfect example and perfect demonstration. People, us, people, regular people working together in a concerted effort to go up against a common adversary. I love this. With these are all kinds of people in that Wall Street bets, Wall Street bets Reddit form come from all walks of life, right? For one moment now, we were able to disregard the, the way we look, where we're from, our ethnic backgrounds, what jobs we have, our political affiliations, our religious affiliations, right? We disregarded all of these things for a moment to come together in a concerted effort. By the way, that Wall Street group has bets, Reddit form has over 6 million people that came together in a concerted effort against a common adversary. Wall Street, the elitists. These are people that have been taking advantage of the system that they're now complaining that we're leveraging against them. Wall Street is the same people that have been getting, taking tons of billions of dollars of cash, of dollars, just pumped to them by the Federal Reserve Central Bank. You see, it's the common enemy that we have, the government, their oversized government, the bureaucracy, where they link up with corporations, they link up with bankers and hedge funds and the central bank, and they all kind of collude together in this elitist kind of sense of like entitlement and power, where they keep all the money and power to themselves and take it away from the rest of us. The same hedge funds who get these, make these bets, and then lost in 2008, and then got bailed out 
by the government with our tax dollars, they always know that when us as a people come together, we are always the most dangerous. And yes, we can make changes. So I feel super excited, super encouraged to see that we as brothers and sisters can come together, come together for one common goal, to take care of our financial well-being and be able to stand together against a common threat the, the bankers, the politicians, the corporations. Cause hey, no, don't get me wrong. I love, there's no, I don't have a problem with you being rich. I have no problem with the rich. I have a problem when you're taking that money, that rich is comes off the backs of other people, right? When you're taking, when you're taking funds and money that's diluting the currency and that's causing us to pay for your bad bets. I'm not a fan of that. Okay. And so, yeah, because it's our right to fight for our liberty, our freedoms, what is right for us, fight for our financial freedom, our economic independence, fight for our money and protect ourselves and our families. It's our right to do that. And I like this, I, I like this. Now I don't, once again, I'm not, I'm not condoning, recommending to buy the stock. I've told you my recommendation, but at the end of the day, you gotta make your own decision on what's best for you. So that's it, my friend. Hope you got value. Hope this was helpful. Helped clarify the entire short selling process, what happened to GameStop, what you can learn from it going forward, all right? If you got value, hey, definitely give the video a like. Consider subscribing to the channel. And hey, check out this video right here on some of the best investment ideas that I got right now. Three investment ideas that I think you should consider. Hey, this one is a gamble, but these are investments that can actually make you money now and in the long term, okay? And that, that video is getting started right now in three, two, one, let's go.